everybody. Happy St. Patrick's Day. It's Miss Marie and I'm here in front of the Giants Causeway in Northern Ireland. It is a volcanic rock formation that is very interesting. It looks like stones that are, you could step on to cross from Ireland into Scotland or from Scotland into Ireland, depending on who's telling the story, I think. Um, I put myself here today because we are going to be reading about uh, my favorite Irish folk hero, Finn McCool. And we're going to be reading some other fun St. Patrick's Day stories. And I hope that you will all join me. And at the end, we're going to be doing some really fun St. Patrick's Day activities. So come on upstairs with me. We're going to read and celebrate St. Patrick's Day. Okay, so for our beginning song today, I thought it would be fun to do a rainbow song. Since rainbows are always associated with St. Patrick's Day. The story is that if you follow a rainbow to the end, you'll find a pot of gold that belongs to a leprechaun at the end of the rainbow. Um, I've got a little scarf that I'm going to wave around when I sing my song. If you have one, that, that's great too. If not, then just wave your arms around like this. Okay, ready? Red and orange, green and blue, shiny yellow, purple too. All the colors that we know live up in the rainbow. Red and orange, green and blue, shiny yellow, purple too. And those were all the colors of the rainbow. Should we sing it one more time? You ready? Red and orange, green and blue, shiny yellow, purple too. All the colors that we know live up in the rainbow. Red and orange, green and blue, shiny yellow, purple too. Great job, everybody. Are you ready to hear some great stories? Come on over here with me. Okay, as promised, I'm going to read to you my favorite um, Irish folktale about Finn McCool and the Giant's Causeway. This particular version of Finn McCool is meant to be a little bit easier to read. So what they've done is they've called, they've decided to call the Scottish giant Red Man um, because his name is very hard to say and it changes. Sometimes he is called um, Cocullen which is kind of hard to say, and it would be hard to spell. Um, so they put it as Red Man, which probably referred to the hair color of the Scottish giant. Um, but here they've illustrated him as red all over, probably to show you how angry he is. He's a very mad giant. And he's mad because Finn has challenged him to a battle. They're both giants, and they're going to have a, a fight. Um, and uh, so this one's angry. This one is kind of scared because this giant is bigger. And scarier. Uh, and here's Finn's wife, Saba, and she is the brains of the operation, as you will see in this story. And here's the giant's causeway, you can see, just like I showed you before the real picture of it. And this is the story of how two giants made the causeway. There once was an Irish giant called Finn McCool. He liked to fight the giants who lived in Scotland, so he built a pathway across the sea called a causeway from Ireland to Scotland. And there's the red man on the other side. One day, Finn told a Scottish, Scottish giant called Red Man to come fight him. When Red Man started to cross the pathway, Finn realized the Sky, Scottish giant was much bigger than he was. He ran home to hide. <laughs> uh oh, he's sweating a little bit. He's nervous. <laughs> When Finn got home, he jumped into the bathtub and his wife Saba threw a blanket over him. There was a very loud knock at the door. <laughs> when Saba opened the door, the red man boomed, where is Finn? I want to fight him. Saba replied, Finn is out hunting, but you're welcome to come inside and wait. Saba pointed to a huge log leaning against the wall of the house. You're welcome to leave your, spin ne your spear next to Finn's, she told Red Man. Now, if this is Red Man's spear and this is Finn's spear, what's, gonna, what's Red Man going to think about Finn? He's bigger and stronger, right? Let's see. Then Saba baked some bread for Red Man. 
hiding in a saucepan in the middle. When Red Man bit into the pan, he broke his teeth. Saba smiled and said, this is the bread that Finn likes the best. So if Finn likes that bread, that means it doesn't break his teeth. That's what Red Man thinks, right? So Finn must have very big, strong teeth. Next, Saba gave Red Man a bucket full of ale. This is Finn's favorite mug, she said. He must be very big, said Red Man nervously. Well, if he drinks out of a bucket that big, he is probably big, right? Or so Red Man thinks that Saba is tricking him. Very smart. Then Saba told Red Man that she needed to feed the baby. She threw some bread to Finn in the bathtub and he moved under the blanket. Red Man thought Finn was the baby. Goodness, so what does he think if he sees this giant hand and thinks it's just the baby? Let's see. Red Man ran from the house crying, if that is the baby and he's that big, how big is his father? He ran all the way back to Scotland across the pathway. Oh my goodness. <laughs> And Saba's kind of laughing because she knows she's tricked him. Finn jumped out of the bathtub and chased Red Man, throwing rocks after him. He smashed up the pathway he had built so that only the jagged ends near the shorelines were left. The end. And that is the end of that silly story by Finn McCool. Now, this book tells us what the moral of the story is. And the moral is a lesson that you can learn from the story. The moral of this story is that we should always think before acting. Finn challenged Red Man to a fight without finding out how big he was first. This story also teaches us that often the brains can beat strength. And I think that is very true in the case of his wife, Saba. She was the brains and she, she was very smart and she knew how to, how to trick him, right? Since nobody knows who first told the story of Finn McCool and the Giant's Causeway, but the story does come from Ireland. There are many Irish stories about this character. He's, they're supposed to tell us, this story told us how the causeway was made. Um, people used to tell stories like this for entertainment before we had TV, radio, or computers. The story has been passed down by Irish storytellers over hundreds of years with different storytellers making their own changes over time. Eventually people began to write the story down and so it has spread all over the world. And like I said, this was a short and, and easy to read version. So they've taken out the, the harder names um, and made the spellings very easy to read. Sometimes Finn McCool is spelled very differently. It's hard to say it or hard to read it. So they made an easy read version, which I thought was really nice. I love that one. Okay, are we ready to hear? That's just for St. Patrick's Day. It is called Pete the Cat, the Great Leprechaun Chase. And I told you there's the leprechaun's pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. There's nice green papers. Pete the Cat. And this is by James Dean and illustrated by James Dean and published by Harper. And there we see the leprechaun riding on Pete the Cat's back. Tomorrow is St. Patrick's Day and Pete's teacher, Mr. G, is teaching about leprechauns. The only time you can catch one is on St. Patrick's Day. A leprechaun will bring you good luck, Mr. G says. Now everyone in class wants a leprechaun. Pete gets a great idea. He will open a leprechaun catching business. Huh, this sounds fun. St. Patrick's Day comes and Pete gathers some supplies. He hangs a sign above his stand. This will be easy, Pete thinks. The sign says, Pete's lucky leprechaun catchers. Squirrel is Pete's first customer. I want a leprechaun, Squirrel says. I need good luck for my test. Cool, I'm on it, says Pete. Is it gonna be that easy? Pete has a plan. He will follow a rainbow until he finds a leprechaun. Finally, Pete arrives at the end of the rainbow and finds Clover the leprechaun next to a pot of gold. Pete sneaks up behind Clover. Swoosh! He's gonna try to catch it with the net. Is it gonna work? But Clover is too fast. Did you think you could catch me so easily, he asks. Once there was a cat named Pete. He thought nabbing some luck would be, be, would be neat. Then he happened upon a smart leprechaun who he'll find quite tricky to beat. Oh boy, 
He's a saucy little leprechaun, huh? Clover disappeared in a puff of green smoke. Pete will need a new plan. Oh, boy. Let's see. That afternoon, Gus visits Pete's leprechauns, lucky leprechaun catchers. I want a leprechaun, Gus says. I need good luck for my band recital. Pete says, I'll see what I can do. Pete plans to lure Clover out with his music. He plays a jaunty song on his guitar. Before long, Clover dances over to Pete. Just a little closer, Pete thinks. Suddenly, Clover starts spinning around Pete. Round and around, Clover goes faster and faster. And he's holding a, a scarf of some sort, or like a, a ribbon. What's he going to do with it? <clears throat> I told you he's tricky. Oh, no. Clover wraps up Pete with the rope. Pete has finally met his match, a crafty leprechaun he can't catch. He never will win, he better give in or find something else to snatch. Oh, that fresh little leprechaun. That evening, Callie visits Pete, luck, Pete's lucky leprechaun catchers. I want a leprechaun, Callie, Callie says. I need good luck for my tennis match. Hmm, says Pete. St. Patrick's Day is almost over. There isn't much time left to catch a leprechaun, but Pete won't give up yet. Pete sets a trap for Clover. Before long, Clover tiptoes up to the trap and sniffs the air. Mmm, I love candy, he whispers, peering under the box. Pete waits very quietly. Crash! Pete rushes over and checks underneath the trap, but it's empty. Clover skips away. Pete has tried many a plot, but still I haven't been caught, and it isn't and isn't it dandy? I even got candy while Pete ends up with squat. Oh, little naughty leprechaun, teasing Pete like that. Pete has an idea. He follows the trail of spilled candy to Clover's secret hideout. Will he finally catch the leprechaun? Let's see. Oh, my goodness, I can't wait to find out. Pete sneaks up behind Clover. Whoosh! Pete finally catches Clover. Oh, my goodness. He's got him in his net. Will he give me luck? What do you, why do you want me, Clover asks. I'm helping my friends who need some extra luck, Pete says. Luck doesn't come from having a leprechaun, says Clover. You and your friends have each other. That already makes you as lucky as you can be. Oh, that's pretty smart, actually. Could Clover be right? Pete is one very lucky cat. A lucky cat doesn't need a lucky leprechaun. He lets Clover go. Pete decides he will be the good luck his friends need by helping them out himself. Pete helps Squirrel study for his test. Squirrel aces it. Pete helps Gus prepare for the recital. Gus rocks it. Pete helps Callie practice for her match. Callie wins it. Clover magically appears. Good luck. Good job, Pete, says Clover. I have one more poem for you. Hmm, maybe this one won't be as fresh. Let's see. <laughs> While Clover played hide and seek, Pete learned something quite unique. That luck you make beats luck you take any old day of the week. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Oh, I think Pete actually learned a really valuable lesson from the leprechaun. And he learned that um, you don't need good luck if you've got good friends. You're lucky already. And I thought that was a really nice St. Patrick's Day story. Usually the leprechauns are kind of mean and mischievous. Um, and this one started off pretty naughty, but he had some really helpful advice for Pete, which I enjoyed. All right, are we ready to do a rhyme on the board about the leprechaun's lucky charms? Let's put him on here so you can see. There's the leprechaun. All right, and it goes like this. Leprechaun, leprechaun, what lucky charms have ye? I have a red heart here with me. Can you say that with me? You ready? Leprechaun, leprechaun, what lucky charms have ye? I have an orange star here with me. Good, now say it with me. Leprechaun, leprechaun, what lucky charms have ye? I have a, what's this? Yellow moon here with me. Leprechaun, leprechaun, what lucky charms have ye? 
I have a green clover here with me. Leprechaun, leprechaun, what lucky charms have ye? I have a blue diamond here with me. Leprechaun, leprechaun, what lucky charms have ye? I have a purple horseshoe here with me. Let's see, I put the horseshoe up to keep the luck in. <laughs> All right, you ready? Leprechaun, leprechaun. Let's see, what colors have we? We've got red, red hearts, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. What does that make? A rainbow. And what do we find at the end of the rainbow? Do you remember? I told you. The leprechaun's pot of gold. There we go. We made it out of the lucky charms that the leprechaun kept with him. Good job, everybody. Okay, if you remember, we um, learned some new rhymes last time about the wind and about March weather because it is very windy outside um, and uh, March is a special month and they have a special poem that goes with it um, that March roars in like a lion and then goes out like a lamb. So we're going to do a different, we're going to do our poem called March and it goes like this. The month of March has just blown in to say that spring will soon begin. March roars like a lion with bluster and a slam and then tiptoes out quietly like a gentle little lamb. Should we do that one more time? You ready? The month of March has just blown in to say that spring will soon begin. March roars like a lion with bluster and slam and then tiptoes out gently like a quiet little lamb. Good job, everybody. How about this one? How about the playful wind? Ready? The wind came out to play one day. It swept the clouds out of the way and it blew the leaves and away they flew. The trees bent low and their branches too. Can you hit the trees like this? Good. The wind grew the great big ships at sea and the wind blew a kite away from me. Oh no, I gotta hold on tight to those kites. All right, let's do one more time, ready? The wind came out to play one day. It swept the clouds out of the way. It blew the leaves and away they flew and bent the trees and their branches too. The wind grew, blew the great big ships at sea and the wind blew my kite away from me. Oh, <laughs> oh dear. All right, should we do another spring rhyme? This one I really love, it's called Sometimes. And it's about the pokey little turtles and the frisky little rabbits. You can do that on your lap. And they, sometimes the rabbits hop, jump, go. Are you ready? Pokey turtles go so slow. But frisky rabbits hop, jump, go. Sometimes I'm a rabbit and I run, run, run. And sometimes I'm a turtle stretching in the sun. Rabbit, hop, jump, go. Take it easy, turtle. Slow, slow, slow. Good job, everybody. That's one of my favorite spring rhymes. We'll be doing that one a lot. Are you ready for one more story? Now, this one is perfect for the beginning of spring. It is called The Hidden Rainbow, and it is written and illustrated by Christine Matheson. And what I love about this book is I'm going to need your help to tell the whole story. And here we see a little flower garden just starting to pop up. And because, of course, winter's still here. We haven't gotten out of winter yet. This book is published by Green Willow Books. The Hidden Rainbow. Oh, it's a counting book, too. Colors, counting, and I need your help. Here we go. One little bee peeks out to see a world of gray and snow. She's looking for bright colors and she needs you to help them grow. You see the little bee? 
of imagery, which means first, please brush the snow off the budding Camilla trees. Can we brush that off? Look, the flowers are red and their nectar feeds two bees. One, two. Tickle the very tops of the growing tulip leaves. That's these ones here. Let's tickle them. Very soon, the bees will find orange. Ooh, orange tulips. And can you see three bees? One, two, three. Next, point to the crocus shoots just beginning to sprout. That's these ones. One, two, three. I'll point to all of them. Crocus. Four bees are eating pollen now that yellow has come out. We touch them and they turn yellow. Let's count the bees. One, two, three, four. Now it's time to search for a special four-leaf clover. I'm going to be planting some clover soon. What luck! A field of green with five bees zooming over. Please wave the... Oh, here first, let's count them. One, two, three, four, five. Please wave the bees back to their hive. Clouds are gathering for a shower. Whoosh. Wave, them, wave at them and then go back to their hive. The bees don't like the rain, but it's important for the flowers. Oh, I see a red and purple and red. But blow the forget-me-not buds dry. You ready? As the rain clears from the sky, those are always my favorite blue flowers that come out. The sun is shining, blue is blossoming, and six bees are buzzing by. One, two, three, four, five, six. Next, trace a line straight down the orderly hyacinth row. That's these ones right here. And we're going to put our finger and trace the line down. And they all turned indigo. It's a type of a dark purple. Seven bees are foraging in blooms of indigo. Let's count them. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. You're practically done. Now blow a kiss to the lovely lilac trees. That's my favorite. This is my Nana's favorite. Let's blow a kiss. When are they going to turn? Ho, 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 ho. The violet blossoms are brimming with nectar for eight bees. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. At last, get ready to find... Nine bees on the rainbow you grew. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But the story is not over. These bees have work to do. What are they going to do? Can you see ten humming bees getting busy in the trees? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They're spreading so much pollen that you might have to ah, 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 chew, sneeze. <laughs> and why are the bees spreading pollen? So something you eat can grow. Thanks to the bees, you'll soon have, what are we going to have? Your own delicious rainbow. <gasps> Look at all those beautiful uh, fruits growing on the trees I see. Red and green apples. I see peaches that are orange, pears that are yellow, blueberries, blackberries, which are actually more of a dark purple color, and plum trees, which are another color of purple. Oh, look at that. Our own delicious rainbow. And the end of the book tells us all about how um, the bees hide in their hive in the winter and they come out and then um, they need to have flowers so that they can eat again and make more honey and spread the pollen and make food for us too. All right, and that's a great little story. I really enjoyed that one. And it kind of reminded me of one more rhyme I should probably teach you. It's about the bees, all right? Can you make a beehive like this? Where are the, here's the beehive, but where are the bees? Hidden away where nobody sees. Watch and they come out of their hive. One, two, Three, four, five. Bzzz. Let's try one more time. Ready? Here is a beehive, but where are the bees? Hidden away where nobody sees. Watch and they'll come out of their hive. One, two, three, four, five. Bzzz.
excellent. I hope you remember that one for the next couple of weeks because really it's coming into flower season and that means bees and honey and all kinds of good fruits and vegetables coming soon too. All right, everybody, I'm going to say goodbye for now. If you have your craft bag and you want to stick around, we're going to be making a rainbow craft for St. Patrick's Day and planting some shamrocks for St. Patrick's Day. If not, I will see you next week. Have a great week. Bye. Okay, so in your craft kit, you should have received um, a little cauldron for the pot of gold, some co rainbow colored strips of paper, some yellow foam to be uh, more gold, some sparkles for gold, and some decorative uh, shamrocks to put on there. I've also got um, my uh, glue stick because I might need that too. So first what I did was I arranged them in rainbow color order. So I've got red, orange, yellow, green, blue, Roy G. Bib, indigo, and violet. There we go. So it's Roy G. Bib. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. So I'm going to now make a paper chain with them. We'll save this violet one for last. And to do the paper chain, you need to take off the paper on the, the sticky part on the back, paper on the back to get the sticky part. And then you bring it around and make a loop, just like that. And now we're going to do the next one will be orange. You can do your colors however you like. I just wanted to make them the Roy G. Bib of the rainbow. Because that's how I remember what the colors of the rainbow are. So let's do yellow. Going around. It's fun making paper chains. I used to make these with my Nana for Christmas. my sparkles, sparkly gold. It just finally adds a little sparkle to it. And now there's going to be a real leprechaun will come and try to get it. <laughs> and don't worry about too much glue because it will dry clear. You can use purple to start with. Kind of a neat little trick that this glue does. Alright, so I've got all my sparkles on there. I'm going to put on a few of my four leaf clovers. These are actually not shamrocks. Shamrocks are usually three leaves. Clovers, lucky clovers are four. They're much harder to find. <laughs> shamrocks are pretty easy to find. I find them out in your yard. Three leaf clovers. And if you can't, we're going to be planting some with our little planting set I put in your craft kit today. All right, so now let's put a little bit of glue on the back of our purple or violet one. Like that. And stick it to the back of our pot of gold. And then we have a really fun rainbow decoration you can hang up on your door once it's all the way dry. And have a St. Patrick's Day decoration. There you go. All right, and if you'd like to keep the St. Patrick's Day fun going after the day is over, I have given everybody a little cauldron and some organic dirt. And you can pack that into your cauldron. And I'm going to put almost all of it in there. And I'm going to take out my seeds. Now, some of you have seeds in a little packet. Mine I had to put them in an envelope. And I had to split up one of my packets. That's okay because there's plenty in there. There's very, very tiny little seeds. You don't need to use all of them. You can save some for another time. You just sprinkle them in. And I used about half my seeds. 
So I'm going to put some more dirt on top. I'm not going to pack it down too much. And I'm going to go and spray this with some water gently and set it in a sunny window. And in a couple days I'll have little green shoots coming up and I will have some, some clover, some shamrocks. And that is that. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Enjoy. And um, I will see you soon. Bye.